it is absolutely just starting to, to juice and the flavor, you can actually see the flavors coming together in that piece of beef. Just a little bit of salt, like right there, right on the corner. That is a perfect amount of salt that will just, just increase the flavor. Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Jeonju, South Korea. Yesterday we went to the ocean, today we are heading to the east of North Joella province and we are going to the mountains. We are heading to a county called Jiangsu and it is famous for beef, Korean beef. So I, I think we're gonna get a chance to try some really good quality beef. And it's also famous for apples and ranches and horses. Welcome to Jiangsu. That was about an hour and a half drive, and this is a really nice little little town nestled in the mountains. The first thing we're gonna do is ride horses. We've just arrived at a, a horse ranch. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? <laughs> oh, you look really warm. Oh, that, that nostril air. You're gonna go Bika? No. I think we're gonna ride full jockey style. We're gonna put on all the gear, and then there is a horse track circuit that we're gonna ride around. Oh, you okay, thank, thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, the jockey hat. This is the first time I can ever say I have worn a jockey outfit. Whoa. And these horses we're about to ride are straight up racing horses. They are huge. This is an amazingly huge and beautiful horse and it is quite a bumpy ride. I have ridden a camel and an elephant recently, but it has been a very long time since I've ridden a horse. And there's Chino back there. Okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I feel like my entire insides have been rearranged. I've been bouncing so hard, but that was that was fun. Beautiful horses and wow, that is tiring. I don't think there is any other thing that sounds as good as beef after riding on a horse and we have just arrived Oh, this is like a butchery. Oh, 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 oh. oh, wow, look at that beef. You choose your beef from the butchery, and then they have a restaurant in the back, I guess, where they're gonna cook it for us. My mouth is watering. <laughs> this is one of the premium top restaurants in Jiangsu for eating Jiangsu beef, which is famous all over Korea. They are lighting the charcoal. We're waiting for the charcoal to finish. We've got our packs of just incredibly wonderful looking marbled beef. 
and then they brought out some of the banchan side dishes. I'm gonna test one. Oh man, flaming from all that fat. I'm not even gonna eat it with anything, just straight. It doesn't taste fatty, but so juicy. And you can really taste that slightly burnt fat that is sizzled from that charcoal. That is remarkable. There's just a little bowl of salt and sesame seeds. That little bit of salt just brings out the flavor of that beef. Wow. For this piece of beef, they just brought us out some bowls of onions, which are shaved white onions and then in some kind of a dressing and they said it's good to eat with this as well eat some onions with the beef let me get some of that dressing as well that does complement the beef extraordinarily well as well very crisp sweet onions in just a very mild kind of vinegary dressing you can always eat it wrapped in lettuce. So for this bite, I'm gonna grab a piece of lettuce, piece of meat, oh, a nice and rare one right here off the grill. Place it right into the leaf of lettuce with a piece of garlic. Oh, that's like a half a, half a clove there. And then some of the bean chili paste. And it has to be eaten in one bite. Also on the table they have perilla leaf and shallots which are marinated or maybe kind of pickled in some soybean oil and so I want to taste the perilla leaf, a more well cooked piece of beef that's been sitting on the grill for a while and try it wrapped into this perilla leaf. Mm. Mm. That's a, a way different touch from wrapping it in lettuce. That has um, that unique flavor from the perilla leaf. Kind of minty, kind of licorice-y, and then it's a little bit like sweet and sour at the same time. I love all the different combinations of how you can eat the beef with the lettuce, with the perilla leaf, with the different sauces. But I have to be honest and say that my absolute favorite way to eat this beef, because it's such good quality beef, is to just simply dip it in that salt. That just upens, increases the flavor of the beef, brings out the flavor, just, it's unbelievable. Oh, and just as this piece of beef is resting in my chopsticks, it is absolutely just starting to, to juice and the flavor, you can actually see the flavors coming together in that piece of beef. Just a little bit of salt, like right there, right on the corner. That is a perfect amount of salt that will just, just increase the flavor. Wow. I don't even have any other descriptive words to use other than it just melts in your mouth. It is customary to just eat the beef on its own first because you want to get the full the full beef explosion flavor without and just those those little condiments without anything um, um, harming the beef experience but so you normally eat rice or noodles afterwards I got a bowl of naengmyeon which are cold noodles ice cold noodles pieces of ice in here he chopped up the noodles with scissors there's an egg in here and a Oh, another piece of beef. And then some other ingredients, some cucumbers. And this is a piece of apple because this area is well known for its apples, famous for its apples, Jiangsu. Mm. Oh wow, it kind of has an apple flavor to it. It's like icy apple juice. You can season with vinegar and then wasabi. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of vinegar. Make it more sour and then also Gotta have some of that wasabi. Oh, and it's like mustardy in color. Oh, that's gonna be good. Okay. Mm. 
あの、初期にやったんじゃないですか、水泳さんの注意、うん、東京で、車さんにかけたら、当時前の、oh, yeah. 変化や。They're that amazingly chewy texture. Oh, I love it. They're so chewy and like sticky, but at the same time, the noodles are so fine and thin. We are back in the car now, driving to our next destination. And something that I just thought of that I want to mention to you is that yesterday, If you have seen the video from yesterday, we had just the most exotic, incredibly fresh seafood meal right from the source. And then today, just a couple hours drive away, we just had the most incredible beef meal from the source again. So, just the contrast of those two meals, but in their own source habitats, amazing. Korea is a food paradise. We just made it to Jinan, which was about a 30 minute drive away, and we came to the Maisan Provincial Park. This is home to a pair of mountains that look like horse ears. That walk took about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, and we have now reached the Horse Ear Peaks Mountains, and in between them is a temple made of stacked stones. What is really interesting about this place is that these pagodas are just made from stacks of stones, and there's no glue or concrete to hold them together, but they just They just stand upright. The Heaven and Earth Stone Tower. And these are at the very top. The Heaven and Earth Stone Tower. We came down from the pagoda and we are about to get some fresh deep fried ginseng. As I'm waiting, this is called chik, and in English it's kudzu, and this is a, a medicinal beverage. Mm, that smells very, smells very bitter, bitter and earthy. Oh wow, that is extremely bitter. That tastes like, it kind of, it kind of tastes like chocolate and coffee, but with a crazy bitterness. Mmm, I like it. I just got my freshly fried piece of ginseng. She just took the ginseng and then she put it in a light batter, deep fried it. This is like a, a ginseng french fry. Mm. I don't know if I taste the ginseng yet. I mostly taste that crispy batter. But the ginseng is in there. I think it's a lot of batter at the top, so I'm gonna try to eat it from the, the bottom where that real root is. Oh yeah. I got a lot of ginseng in that bite. It's kind of starchy like a potato. It has a little bit of a, an earthy bitter taste to it. It had kind of a taste of like an earthy carrot, but with the texture of a boiled potato. We just drove to the other side of the Horsier Mountains, and from this side, you get a you get a nice view of how they are actually look like horse ears. But we've just arrived to the Red Ginseng Spa, this giant structure. 
<laughs> wow, wow, that is a lot of ginseng. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but I think there are some, a series of spa baths and jacuzzis and treatment uh, like bathtubs and they gave us some a little packet of a some floral swimming shorts and also a welcome drink of Korean red ginseng. I'm gonna drink this right now. Mmm. Mmm. That tastes like a kind of like a smoked or like a like a burnt tree. Mmm. It's pretty good. Floral shorts and speedo swimming cap. I'm good to go. Ginseng spa time. I don't really have any idea what we're gonna do here. Don't laugh at me. But I just rubbed mud and red ginseng powder all over my face. We're gonna wait for about 10 minutes and supposedly the shower heads. That was pretty cool. It was kind of like a whole do-it-yourself spa, so we just moved around from station to station. I actually just smell like ginseng right now. For dinner tonight, we have just arrived at a restaurant that specializes in sundubu, which is a very soft type of tofu. We got this big block of tofu to start with, and you just kind of cut it. It is steaming hot. Oh, and the, on the inside it has some texture. It looks kind of crumbly. I think we're just a, uh, about 15 kilometers from Jeonju, and so this is a a well-known tofu area. They produce a lot of tofu around here. We are gonna begin with this big block of tofu. Mm. Mm. It's really fluffy and it almost has a milky flavor to it. it kind of just sort of goes away in your mouth. I ordered the sundubu jjigae with everything included. So there's pork in here, there's mushrooms in here. I think there's some clams or shellfish and lots of leeks. And at first, you almost think it's like scrambled eggs down here, but this is the tofu, this is the sundubu. And oh, that smells wonderful. That is some flaming tofu. It actually almost has the same texture as like scrambled eggs, but a little lighter and more fluffy. And then in that soup, you can taste a little bit of like clams in there. Where are the clams? There are the clams. You can taste the mushrooms and the leeks and the dry chili. Oh, that is, that is like a comfort piping hot tofu soup. I'm gonna really cool this bite down first. Follow that with some of the rice. All of these mushrooms. And you can mix some of your rice into the tofu soup if you want, but here's a move I like to make. I like to put some rice into my spoon and just let it soak up some of that soup and eat it like that. That adds all of that brothy chili flavor to the rice. Tofu sometimes gets a bad reputation and I'll even be guilty of that, of, of not thinking tofu is gonna be that delicious myself. But there are some tofu dishes like mapo tofu and sundubu jjigae that are absolutely sensationally delicious as a tofu dish. And actually, come to think of it, this is almost like the liquid form of mapo tofu. It was so good, 
the tofu just melts in your mouth and just with all that chili, the minced meat in there, the leeks, fantastic. And I would highly encourage you, if you don't like tofu, to try sundubu jjigae. It's amazing. That's gonna be it for today. We are just gonna drive back to Jeonju. And so I'm gonna end the vlog right now at this, this house of sundubu jjigae. Thank you all very much for watching today's video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I would love to hear from you. And also make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. And I will see you for the next video. Hello, you, you look like a soldier. <laughs> we are fully jockeyed, jockeyed. I got nam nyong, 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 nam nyong,